Welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Laurent Panchard. I'm the CEO of Addison Board and uh, main architect of the LibCam project. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'll try in just 40 minutes to show you how easy and quick it is to add support for your platform in LibCamera. So let's imagine the following situation. OK, first, let's imagine that this would work. There you go. Um, you have a brand new SOC. Okay, you're working for an SOC vendor, you're creating a brand new platform. This is going to be amazing. You're about to release that to the public, and <coughs> that SOC has the best camera hardware ever. Right? So you want to make sure that all your customers can benefit from that. You are about to unveil that to the general world. Uh, you're really excited about it. Uh, you've prepared a development board that's going to be cheap and then that everybody wanted to buy. And because we're all engineers, and you're extremely good at marketing, coming up with names, you decided to call that the broccoli pie. Okay? <laughs> it's going to be a hit with the kids. They love broccolis. So <clears throat> you've done your homework. You've watched videos on YouTube of previous talks on how to enable support on the camera side for camera sensor drivers, for your ISP driver. So you've done all that. This is not what we're going to talk about today. Um, and you have, of course, decided to use the Media Control API, the V4L2 API. You're going upstream with the drivers. Um, <coughs> you have not been shy asking for support uh, from the, the video for Linux community uh, because these things can be quite hard. Um, <coughs> but Let's assume that all that is done, right? Actually, your hardware may be a bit more complex than that. So let's add just a tiny bit of complexity. And you may have something that looks like that, OK? And you may be a bit concerned. That's going to be a bit hard to swallow for the users. So <coughs> fortunately, you have also seen presentations about Leap Camera. And you know, there's this thing over there that seems to be exactly what I need. And you're absolutely right. So let's see how Leap Camera can help you. First question, who does not know, who has never heard of Leap Camera before? OK, one hand at least, two, three, OK, there's a few. Great. I'm very happy because the front row here, everybody has a Leap Camera t-shirt, so I haven't kind of, I don't know, I assume you may not learn that much today. Uh, but yes, hopefully there will be other people in the room who will come out with <coughs> um, additional information. OK. so. <coughs> What is Leap Camera? Leap Camera, if you're familiar with the graphics world, uh, all describe that as the mesa of the, camera, of the camera world. So it's a complete user space camera stack. As I mentioned, you've done your homework on the kernel side. Leap Camera does not touch the kernel. It assumes that we have kernel drivers. Uh, but it provides a complete stack in user space. So <coughs> it handles things like enumeration, of cameras. Uh, it will automatically figure out what's in your system, uh, exposes that to your applications. Um, and it supports for each camera uh, that it finds in the system, capturing multiple streams uh, at the same time in different resolutions, different formats with different properties. And it also supports controlling all the parameters of the camera for every single frame that you capture. So compared to using a USB webcam and using the default API directly, you have a lower level, uh, <coughs> much more powerful control of all your camera parameters. Uh, we're talking potentially about hundreds of different tunable parameters that, uh, that you could set. Um, and I think probably needs a new battery at some point. So this is what Leap Camera looks like. Uh, at the very bottom, Laser pointer works as well. You have the hardware. You've done that. Remember, first slides, you've got amazing hardware. And you have upstream kernel drivers on top of that. So the camera is everything that sits on top. Um, and looking at what we have in there, um, the first thing that I'm going to mention uh, for those who are not familiar with Leap Camera is kind of the entry point. Um, so we have an object called the camera manager. Be relatively brief on that because the goal is to see how to add support for your platform and your camera, but it's important to understand the architecture. Um, this is what your applications will go to to get all the cameras in the system, to enumerate the cameras, to see what's there, to get hold of cameras and, and, and use them. Um, and we do have another component in Leap Camera. Um, well, camera manager first. So as I mentioned um, enumeration of uh, all the devices in the system. Uh, and a new word that we're introducing here, creation of what we call pipeline handlers. So the pipeline handler in Leap Camera is the 
platform specific component that handles all the plumbing. It's going to handle communication with the kernel, with all the drivers, not just necessarily, not just the kernel directly. You could have a camera pipeline that, uh, that uses a GPU for processing, for instance. Uh, so your pipeline handler is really a piece of plumbing that will take all the, all the harder pieces, all the, all the processing pieces, and put them together uh, in a platform specific way. So <coughs> your camera manager has enumerated cameras. Uh, it instantiates pipeline handlers that will register one or more cameras. Uh, you may have a sing single or multiple camera supported uh, in, uh, in, in your system. Um, <coughs> and we're getting to the part that I mentioned is here, uh, um, the platform specific part. So you have on the right hand side in green, the pipeline handler, we'll dive a bit into that because I'm going to show you how you can implement this for your platform. And the left hand side, it's the counterpart to, uh, to the pipeline handler, a part that's also uh, platform specific. And that's all the image processing algorithms. When I'm talking about image processing algorithms, we call that IPA uh, in lead camera. Nothing to do with the beers, although I'm sure that a uh, few people will exit this room who are wishing it would have been beer instead. Um, but those are not algorithms that will process the image directly. We're talking here about ISP control, hardware processing of your images. But it's all the algorithms that will compute the hundreds, sometimes thousands of parameters that need to be uh, set at the hardware level for every single frame that will be processed. So if you're familiar a bit with um, uh, control, uh, control theory and um, things like PIDs, for instance. You can imagine like this would be a PID on steroids. Uh, instead of having one input and one output parameter, you have uh, thousands of inputs, thousands of outputs, and this works in real time, and that's really the control loop of, uh, of your system. So that's really the hardware-specific part. Um, <coughs> As I mentioned, the pipeline handler interfaces with the kernel. Uh, we'll figure out uh, all the video for Linux media devices that it needs to, it needs to use and abstract all of that towards your applications. Leap camera does not expose anything that's video for Linux specific to applications. Uh, an application using camera does not even see the VFO to pixel formats. It's really completely hidden uh, behind the scenes. Um, <coughs> and there we go. Um, as I mentioned already, your uh, image processing, uh, processing alg algorithms, your IPA module, will typically consume statistics that are computed by the hardware, because when you have high resolution, high frame rates, computing statistics with the CPU is expensive. So ISPs assist with that. Uh, it consumes them and calculates the parameters to be applied to the next frame. If you had to put that in a uh, really simplified way, the statistics will show, oh, the image is a bit too dark. I'm going to push the exposure time up. There's way more than that. Um, so when it comes to the, uh, the image processing algorithms and the IPA modules, they are Leap Camera separate modules. They run, they, they, they load it at runtime, they're pluggable. And <coughs> the idea is that they completely isolate it from the rest. Uh, they, they only communicate with your pipeline handler. They do not access the hardware directly. Uh, ever. So that's an architecture decision. The pipeline handler is part of the Leap Camera core. It has to be fully open source, while the IPA modules don't. Uh, they can be out of tree, they can be closed source, because vendors uh, often don't want to release uh, the, all the knowledge they have put in creating those algorithms. We have implementations of those in Leap Camera that are fully open source. That's what we work on. But we want to also offer the vendor the ability uh, to, have, uh, um, to provide closed source implementations. Not that we like that, but it's exactly the same situation as, uh, with the GPUs. Um, a vendor who wants to upstream DRM drivers for a GPU in the kernel. I'm losing my microphone. I'm trying to fix that. There we go. Um, has to provide an open source implementation of OpenGL of Vulkan in Mesa but they are free to also provide a closed source implementation in parallel if they want to. So that's, that's the kind of architecture we have here. Um, so RPN modules, if they're closed source, they are sandboxed. They can only communicate with the pipeline handler. Um, there's a whole IPC system to handle that. And now that you're very familiar with Leap Camera, five minutes, um, we're going to dive into uh, the, the bulk of the talk today. How do you add support for your new platform? So a brief, very briefly, because if you want to add support for a new platform, I have bad news for you, you're going to have to write code. Uh, hopefully there are a few people in this room who don't mind that. Um, 
So how does it look like? Where do you find the code? What does the source tree look, uh, look like? Um, navigating lib camera, it's at the top level, you have just a few, a few directories. I'm not going to enumerate all that. This is more for reference, um, so you can uh, check the slides offline. Um, <coughs> but uh, we do have an include directory with uh, lots of uh, different things there, and a source directory that contains different components. I think that part is a bit more interesting. Uh, we have the core and libcamera in the libcamera directory. Uh, we have Python bindings. We have <coughs> um, uh, adapt what we call adaptation layers that adapt uh, towards existing frameworks. So we have a GStreamer uh, element implementation, for instance. Uh, we have uh, vfold to compatibility layer that emulates Video for Linux for Video for Linux native applications that you may not be able to change or recompile. They may be closed source and you want to still use lib camera. Um, so those kind of things. We have an Android camera HAL implementation. So for those who, who don't know that, uh, if you take lib camera, if it supports a platform, not only are you going to uh, be able to run that on native Linux systems uh, with applications that use lib camera directly, uh, but you'll be able to use plug and play application that you GStreamer, Pipewire nowadays, uh, and also uh, work on any Android system. So you get that for free, basically. Um, really? <laughs> OK. Quickly going down and back to where we were. Um, yeah, that's the one. Um, in the lib camera directory, the core of lib camera, that's we're going to look at now, we have a bunch of pipeline handlers for different supported platforms today. Uh, there's actually one more. This is a bit of an old slide. Uh, and we're expanding uh, coverage for this. I was really hoping that I could announce today on stage support for at least one brand new platform that everybody would be excited about, but that has, is not the case. So see you at the next conference where hopefully it's going uh, to be possible. Um, no spoilers. Um, and same thing in the IPA directory with the uh, IPA modules, we have support for different platforms there. So that's what you're going to look like. Let's start simple and fairly quickly. Um, this is the block diagram of a camera pipeline on an NXP MX-810 Plus for a piece of hardware called the ISI. So it's not an ISP, it's fairly simple. You have multiple inputs from different camera sensors, you have a crossbar switch in the, in the front, and you have a very short processing pipeline here, a uh, bit easier to read. You have your image sensors outside of the chip, obviously, CSI to receiver, and the processing pipeline just has a scaler and a color space converter, more or less, so can't do much. But there's lots of platforms that are as simple as that. And to support them easily, uh, looking at first use case, single camera, we have um, added an implementation of the camera of what we call the simple pipeline handler. So the simple pipeline handler is probably the most complex piece of code we have in Lib camera. Uh, we're great at picking names, remember, broccoli pie. Um, it's not simple for its implementation, but because it supports simple pipelines. Uh, and the reason why it's complex, it's because it will do that completely automatically. It will enumerate using standard kernel APIs what you have in your device, and will try to figure out a linear pipeline between a camera sensor and a uh, VFOL to capture a video node. And if it finds that pipeline, it will say, okay, that's a camera. Um, so that's, that's all implemented internally. If, if your hardware is as simple as that, if it doesn't contain any block that requires device-specific knowledge for the configuration, uh, then you can use that. This documentation in the source code if you want to look at it with a brief explanation of the architecture and what it does. Uh, but to use it, um, so we're looking here at the media graph of, of the device. Um, and what we're looking at when we want to support a single and single camera is one camera sensor connecting to your CSAT receiver. You have your crossbar switch that will be passed through and then just the short processing pipeline. So for that, that's the source code of the simple pipeline handler. If you want to add support for your platform, it's a one line of code change. I told you you had to write code. Hopefully, that's going to be manageable. Um, but you add the name that the driver exposes to user space, and that's it. CAM is a command line test tool that we have. 
it can list available cameras in the system, and it finds one. And then from the first camera, I'm asking it to capture five frames, and it captures five frames. It's that simple. Actually, maybe not, because it prints a warning saying, oh, there's an unsupported video for Linux pixel format that I don't know about. Well, this has been fixed uh, since then, uh, but if your device brings a new pixel format that Leap Camera doesn't know about, well, you may have to um, add support for that. So in our list of supported formats, you add your new formats that the device supports. Um, you uh, add that to a corresponding C++ file with a description of uh, what the format is. It has a name. It has 24 bits per pixel uh, here, or the pixel laid down in memory. Um, and with that done, um, skip to the next slide. Okay, go back behind the keyboard. This doesn't work really, really well. Um, you get rid of the warning, and uh, <coughs> and you get full support for Unipixel format. If you look at dual cameras, uh, same thing. The simple pipeline handler will see you have two image sensors. Uh, there are two video nodes at the end. It will try to figure out pipelines in between uh, and do that uh, do that automatically. Um, so, same thing, it lists two cameras um, at, the, at the top. I can see there was uh, just one camera before, now we have two of them capturing five frames from one camera. Um, when you try to capture frames from the second one, again, this is fixed uh, since I presented this last time, uh, but we didn't have support for correctly enumerating internal routes inside the crossbar switch. Um, so we had a media control API that lets you see what's happening in your device, but nothing in video for Linux to handle the crossbar switch correctly. So what we have done is that we have decided to extend the kernel API. Very important point, I said that Leap Camera is not about kernel development, but if we have issues with the kernel, well, someone has to fix them. Um, so we drive the media control and VFOL to API development, but this is not... Uh, a hostile takeover of the kernel. We are not replacing video for Linux. We are user space framework. Um, so we added support inside Lib Camera and in the kernel for the new v to subdev routing API that allows uh, showing what's happening inside uh, all, the, all those blocks in the pipeline. Uh, we added support for that in, in helpers that we have in Lib Camera um, and updated the simple pipeline handler to use that API and then uh, with Relatively simple changes there. I'll let you judge a few patches. Uh, you can capture a frame from your second camera. So this is not even something you will probably have to do because now that the API is supported and is in upstream, your driver would use that. That works out of the box. Uh, but that's the kind of experience you can expect if you want to do something that still remains simple but is not exactly supported today. Now, what's more interesting is if you have an actually complicated platform that requires a device-specific pipeline handler. Um, first of all, we have documentation. We have a pipeline handler writer's guide. First step, you read that. Um, it's in the Lib Camera Source tree, compared to HTML. It's a nice document that uses an actual use case to guide you uh, through uh, adding support for a new platform. Um, and I'm going to try to explain that today in five easy steps. So first thing, I'm going to write a skeleton for a pipeline handler and wire that to the build system. Uh, Lib Camera uses Mesen for its build system. Uh, hopefully you all like that. Uh, it's not make-based. Um, we found it much, much easier to use an auto autoconf, but I know this is sometimes a, a bit of a controversy. Um, so you add to the Mesen options file your new, new pipeline handler, a name there. Uh, you create uh, inside the pipeline directory uh, a subdirectory for your new pipeline handler with a Mesen build file. You're going to have a single source file to start with. Um, and we're creating our skeleton here. Uh, I think this is probably the most important piece of information I'm trying to convey today. We have Lib Camera is in C++, by the way. We have a class called Pipeline Handler. We're going to inherit from that and implement a set of operations that all pipeline handlers have to implement. And there are not that many of them. That's that just all the operations that we need. Um, so we have 
matching, configuration handling, uh, buffer handling, and then, well, no, actually, they probably, oh, no, sorry, stop is uh, underneath here. So starting, stopping, uh, and being able to capture frame. And then we have a nice macro that's very handy at the bottom to register the pipeline handler. So it's really about doing this and filling in the blanks. So matching first. Matching, if you're familiar with the kernel uh, driver model, matching in camera is more or less the equivalent of probe in the kernel. Uh, so it's, uh, the idea is to figure out which pipeline handler we can use for a given piece of hardware uh, and uh, instantiate that pipeline handler and create cameras. Um, <laughs> More manageable media grab than the big one with all the blocks and the links, uh, otherwise we'll spend the whole day on that. Uh, but this is a piece of hardware with a camera sensor at the top. If you don't have any camera sensor, I'm not sure why in this room. Uh, there's a CSI to receiver because most cameras that we deal with today are, uh, use CSI2. You have an ISP. Despite the fact it's a single block, they can be Tens, dozens of processing blocks inside can be a fairly complex ISP. Um, but the interface towards the outside world is that it consumes parameters that are put in memory buffers. Think of that if you know about GPUs, about a command stream that you send to a GPU. It will output statistics that it calculates on the frames. Uh, and at the output of the resizer, you also have, uh, of the ISP, sorry, you have two resizer blocks, so you can capture two uh, streams with uh, frames of different sizes at the output. That's, that's the hardware we're looking at. Um, I've put it in the bottom right as a reminder. Um, so the match function of the pipeline handler uh, will try to acquire a media controller device uh, among all the ones that in the kernel that match a set of criteria. In this specific case, uh, the name of the driver and the list of entities that it expects to find. Uh, so that's entirely platform specific, of course. If it doesn't find anything, it returns false. That's it. It hasn't found uh, hardware that it can handle, and Leap Camera will go to the next pipeline handler. But if you find something there, well, then it's up to you, that's platform specific code, uh, to then start using the kernel devices uh, that, uh, <coughs> that support your ISP and, and all the hardware you have in, in your device. So in our class, we have a, a set of objects that we add there, pointer to a media device that we get, v to subdesk, v to video nodes. Uh, the important part here is that Leap Camera provides an extensive set of helpers that you can use to write your pipeline handlers. You don't have to deal with the complexities of the v 2 API directly, at least not too much. Uh, it's encapsulated in classes that are still v 2 specific, uh, but that makes it much easier to deal with the API than uh, calling the IOCTLs directly. Um, so using those, in our match function, now that we have found a media device, we say, OK, uh, we know we have two resizes and connected video nodes. We're going to loop over uh, two instances, uh, looking at the name of those entities, trying to acquire those entities, uh, creating VFL to subdev instances, uh, VFL to video node instances for the capture nodes at the output of the pipeline. We store that internally in, uh, in a class member. Um, and so we build, basically, all the things that we need. And we do error checking along the way. If there's a missing piece, well, maybe there's something wrong at the, at the kernel level, or it's not the hardware we can deal with, so we bail out. Uh, but this is really the equivalent of the pro function, trying to discover what we have and initialize everything. Um, still a match function, so we looked at the resizer. You're going to do the same for your ISP, for your CSI to receiver. You can get entities by name, as we see here, but sometimes for other components, especially the camera sensor, for instance, you may not know the name of the entity because you could have different camera sensors connected to your system. So instead of that, with the helpers that we have, you can follow the media graph and say, OK, I don't know the name of this block, but I know it's connected to input zero of my ISP, so what's that? So you follow the links and get the pieces that you need. Um, so we're discovering the pipeline, same thing, we're looking for camera sensor, uh, an entity that exposes the function camera sensor. If we don't find one, well, we bail out again. And uh, once we get to the camera sensor, imagine that you have a single ISP but multiple sensors, okay? And you wouldn't be able to capture from all of them at the same time, but you can uh, Pick one, capture from that camera sensor, stop the video stream, capture from another one. So you have multiple cameras in the system, but they share pieces of hardware. This is why we introduce 
uh, uh, another, another class, because your pipeline handler can, in that case, create multiple camera instances. So we saw before how we were storing data in the pipeline handler class. Uh, but if you have data that you have to store per camera, then <coughs> you create a subclass of uh, an internal uh, class in camera called camera private, where you can store your per camera data. In this case, we just have uh, a pointer to the camera sensor and the fact that we can capture two streams. So that's, that's how you split your data between the camera side, which is per camera, and the pipeline handler side, which is uh, everything. If you have a single camera uh, that can be supported in a pipeline handler, the boundary between those two doesn't make too much sense anymore. You can put things on one side or another. It doesn't matter too much. But the logical separation is pipeline handler side, share resources, camera side, things that are per camera. So we create an instance of our camera data per camera. Uh, we store there the pointer to our camera sensor. Um, and in the initialization function of this camera data, we actually uh, call the init function of the sensor. Camera sensor, again, help a class in camera to help you deal with the complexity of V4 2 for camera sensors, all encapsulated there. And getting back to the match function, well, we're getting to the end. We found all the pieces we need, and we decide to open the devices, and that opens the, uh, the device in slash dev, so we can start using them for the sub devs for the v, uh, vfold to video node. Um, and it's then time to register the camera, or multiple cameras we have found in the system. Um, and so once you get to the register camera call at the very end of the match function, lead camera will know there are one, multiple cameras supported by this, and application will be able to start using them. First test, once you're there, there's not enough code obviously to use the camera, but at least you can enumerate them. And you see that there's one camera there in the system. The ID is a bit, well, not very nice for humans, but this is a textual ID whose goal is to be stable in a system across reboot. So you know that this string will be the same for the same camera, uh, even if you reboot your system, as long as obviously you don't change the hardware or possibly the firmware. If you do a firmware update in system, depending on what the firmware exposes, the name might change. But otherwise, that's a stable ID, not meant to be consumed by humans. Um, the, there was no nice name for the camera, by the way, as you saw, just, just this string that's, that's not very nice, so no real human-readable name. If we add properties uh, in our camera data class, just taking them from the sensor helper, so asking, okay, uh, I want the properties of the sensor, I'm going to store them in the camera data, just adding that one line of code will help and will show you, oh, actually, it's an internal front camera in the system, so that's already much nicer for the, for the user. Um, so that's it for the matching. Then we get to the configuration part. Configuration is about generating a configuration. Uh, it's about validating what the user wants to do and then applying it to the device. So that means that you have to fill a generate configuration uh, uh, function uh, in, the, in the pipeline handler class. It's one of the API pieces that's, uh, that I need, um, where we just create a new instance of a camera configuration, and then we initialize that with default values. Simplified code, uh, there's a single stream here with a fixed resolution. Normally, you wouldn't look at the stream roles that are given by the application. Application may want to say, I want a stream for viewfinder, I'm going to display on, on the screen, and a stream to capture still images in a larger resolution. And so you would take that into account uh, to initialize and, uh, and create your configuration. But this function does that and returns the configuration to the application. Then that configuration object is uh, again, a, a camera class that you inherit from. You, can, you have to implement a validate operation on that. You can store additional data in your class. And the validate operation, if you're familiar a bit with video for Linux, that replicates uh, slightly the, the model we have there, where if you want to configure your device, you're going to ask the kernel to set some parameters, and the kernel will come back to you saying, not saying, no, I can't do that, because then you know the wiser, you, can't, you, you don't know what it can do instead, but it will give you back something that may have been adjusted, saying, you wanted this exact resolution, well, I can't do that exactly, I'm going to give you something that's close, but not the same. So the validate function here is the same, it's going to potentially adjust what the application requests to something that the camera can produce. So in the validate function, um, 
you would typically uh, iterate over in your camera configuration over all the stream configuration. So I said Leap Camera can capture multiple streams for one camera. So one camera sensor at the same time generating uh, two streams at potentially different resolutions, different formats. So you're going to have a look at the stream configuration and see if what the user requested is possible. Is it beyond the limits of the hardware? Is it that actually each of the streams would be valid independently, but together you exceed the, the, the bandwidth you have in your system? So that's, that's where you do that adjustment. And then, once the configuration has been validated, uh, the application asks Leap Camera to configure uh, the camera with configure function, and that's where we're going to take uh, the configuration that is given and then look at all the devices you have in the pipeline, all the things we have discovered at much time, all the things we have opened, and call the v 4 to help us to then uh, enable disable links in the graph uh, or take the configuration of, of a stream uh, and then set the sensor format, set the format on all the, um, the blocks in the pipeline. So because this pipeline is entirely device specific, that's device specific code that's up to you to configure your device. So we're done with the configuration. We're nearly ready to use the camera. We need buffers to capture frames into. Leap Camera is based on a model where mostly you import buffers. The API assumes that the application has buffers and imports them in Leap Camera, telling here, here are buffers in which I want to capture frames. That's the case, for instance, if you want to display something. You may allocate buffers from your display device, from your GPU, so you have those buffers and you can use them with Leap Camera. But in some applications, especially in the simple case, you may not have that. So there's a helper uh, where Leap Camera can also provide you buffers. Um, so every pipeline handler has to implement one function called export frame buffers that will allocate buffers if the application uh, uh, asks for that. And the way it's done, really, is using the vfold to helpers, the vfold to API to allocate the buffers in the kernel and then exporting them to application. So that's usually a very simple piece of code, but it's to make the life of applications a bit easier. In an unknown future, when we will have a unified memory allocator on Linux systems for media devices, something similar to Android Ion, for instance, based on DMA buff heaps and a use based library to handle that and handle all the constraints, this should go away because the job of Leap Camera is not to allocate buffers. Um, but as long as we don't have that, this is something we have to keep. And then we're ready to implement the capture side. Starting the device, starting the camera, uh, getting the capture request from applications, uh, and well, stopping the device when you're done. So how is that done? Well, we have a start function. Again, this is about starting the hardware. So meter graph specific to your device, uh, code specific to your device as well. And in this case, we're going to loop over the path. Uh, has the configuration enabled each of the two output paths? And for each path that is enabled, well, let's uh, call the stream on function um, to, uh, um, to enable the, or to start the v to device. Um, queuing a request, we get a function called with what we call in Leap Camera a capture request from an application. So it's basically bundling a buffer or multiple buffers and controls together. Um, and so we have to queue those buffers to the capture device, uh, which is again the v 4 to device at the end of the pipeline. Um, so that's also usually a fairly simple implementation. The counter counterpart of starting is stopping. Nothing very uh, complicated there either. It's fairly uh, small amount of code. And then we're ready. Final test. We're going to capture frame of our camera with our camera. We start the cam application. It prints this. And then you wait a bit and a bit more. And well, you may get a cup of tea if you want to. But nothing happens. Why? Well, we've started a device, but there's no code so far that actually connects events we may get from the kernel to the pipeline handler. We don't know when the frame is ready. We're not signaling that to applications. Um, so that's something we have to, man to add at match time for all the uh, vfold to video nodes. Well, we connect the buffer ready signal that's emitted uh, by the helper classes in Leap Camera to a handler that's device specific. Um, and so in our pipeline handler, we create a handler that we call buffer ready. Uh, and we're completing the buffer, we're completing the, the capture request from the user. And this is what will signal to the user that the frame has been captured. And so with that code in place, now it's much better. We can actually capture frames. So that's the pipeline handler side. In practice, it's going to be probably slightly more complex than that, going to be a bit more uh, error handling. Uh, they were placeholders, validating a configuration and generating one and configuring a device, a bit more line of code because you have more blocks, but more or less, that's, that's what we're looking at. 
Then how do we actually control the ISP? Because that was the plumbing, that's why it's called pipeline handler. You know, it's putting all the blocks together and handling the pipeline, but we haven't seen on how to calculate all the parameters for that ISP and how, how to handle all the control loop. So I was talking about IPA modules. I said we had a nice guide to tell you how to write pipeline handlers. Well, we have a nice guide to tell you how to write IPA modules as well. Isn't it great? Um, same directory compiled to uh, HTML, and you should start by reading that. Um, four steps only, right? Compared to five, makes it sound e much easier to write support for an ISP. May not be exactly the same, but we start with what we call the IP interface. So I said IP module, load it dynamically at runtime, communicates with a pipeline handler. Well, if you want to communicate between the two and you have to communicate device specific information, those pieces of code are device specific, well, you need a communication protocol that's going to be device specific as well. So that's what we call the IP interface. Um, we use a system Lip camera, an IDL that's uh, uh, from Chrome OS actually um, called Mojo. So it's just a C-like uh, syntax to, uh, to express an interface. And we have our here our IP interface with a set of function in it, start, stop, configure, uh, map, and map buffers, queue requests. So this is entirely device specific. There are a few functions in the interface that are required. The init function, start, stop, think configure, map and unmap are, are required, but the rest is something that is up to you. Depending on what you need to communicate, well, you create your own functions and indicate what type of data need to be passed uh, between the two. Important point, all the functions by default are synchronous. There are asynchronous functions as well at runtime. So once the camera is started, everything becomes asynchronous. You tell the IPA, OK, uh, statistics are ready. Here are the statistics, but you don't block. Uh, and the IP at some point will uh, compute ISP parameters based on that. And that's the other side of the IP interface, is the even interface, where the IPA will say, asynchronous as well, OK, the ISP parameters are ready, the sensor parameters are ready. IPAs are isolated in a separate thread, so they don't block the main pipeline handler. They also isolate it potentially in a separate process if they are closed source. So communication can be a bit costly. Do not have try to minimize the amount of events. If you always generate on the IPA module side the ISP parameters and the sensor parameters for the next frame together, well, don't have two calls, uh, two, two events, parameters ready and sensor controls uh, available, but build them together and pass the data together. So we have an interface, and now we need to look at how to handle that in the pipeline handler. Uh, wiring up the capture of the statistics from the ISP, uh, communicating with the IPA, uh, configuring the ISP. And this is going to be, because we're running out of time, unfortunately, we can't do that all in 40 minutes. I'm sorry to disappoint you. The topic for the next talk about Lib Camera. But, obviously, if you really can't wait, you can have spoilers. So I'm available, the whole Leap Camera team is available to guide you through this. Um, uh, I will try probably for embedded recipes in September to have a talk about the actual IP module and how to implement the algorithms and the auto exposure and the auto white balance and all those pieces. Uh, but this was really the plumbing, the pipeline handler side, how we're going to communicate with our IP module. Um, and we'll then see how all that is done. So that was Lead Camera in a, in a nutshell, uh, contact information available, and now we may have a couple of minutes for questions, or half a minute or something like that. Two minutes for questions, and well, you can come to me afterwards anyway, if you're not very hungry. <laughs> Any question? Yes? Is there a bike? Yep. <laughs> 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 Easy answer. <laughs> So thanks for the presentation. I have a question regarding the ISPs. Uh, what about firmware? Like that's loaded by kernel, or is it like the task also of the lip camera? So the ISP firmware is not something that lip camera will, will handle. What even from a kernel point of view, uh, what we consider to be the ISP interface, like the device to kernel, is combination of hardware and firmware. So if you have firmware running on the ISP, the kernel driver may need to load it with a firmware API. Uh, so that's a kernel task. But then the, AP, the API that the firmware exposes towards the host is what the kernel will use, what libcamera will use. So we don't dive into the firmware. So basically, it's the same as GPU. Yes, exactly. OK, thanks. Another question?
In the back. Um, is Lip Camera already capable of generating a command stream for the ISPs? Yes. Well, it depends a bit what you mean by command stream. The platform that we support today, uh, they bundle all the SP buffers, uh, all the SP parameters in a memory buffer. It's expressed because that's how those ISP work as C structures, uh, imbricated C structures with hundreds of parameters. Uh, so you can consider that to be a common stream. Uh, but if you have an ISP where instead of having a set of parameters, uh, you, you have things that look more like commands, it's exactly the same thing. From a libcamera point of view, it's about putting those things in a buffer. That's the job of the RPA module, uh, platform specific. Uh, so that's fully supported, yes. So thank you very much. We're out of time. Maybe find you uh, in the hallway and uh, ask some more questions. Absolutely. Thank you very much.